Saludos. Saludos. Okay. I just told her I didn't get the official bio, but I'm going to read the back of the book um, <laughs> after I read the thing I wrote. Um, so, so like, I want to begin by saying that, like, I'm a believer in the magic of serendipity and irony. So oftentimes the things we need haven't really been or been able to find the words to ask for, find us. But their timing is usually late. But thankfully, I exist in Orkhesian time. <laughs> so it came at the right time. I say this because I wish I had found Karankawa er earlier, or perhaps better said that it had found me. I'm just finishing my thesis and preparing for my defense and reading Ilyana's book in preparation for tonight. I was struck by the fantastic serendipity of her book and what I'm trying to do. The first poem of her book has an egg and then a woman who was an egg. The first poem of my manuscript is a mother who is an egg cracked open by her son. The final words of Karankawa are, I did, and the last of mine are, I do. No lie. <laughs> I, 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 could, I could go on and on about the confluences, but I won't. Uh, in any world except the world of the impossible that poet, poets exist in, these would be random occurrences. It would be curiosities, would be ironies. But for me, this is magical realism. And I'm grateful to have had this wondrous book find me and hopefully help me leap forward. The poems in this book are bursting with wonder. The Impossible You, that's the title of one of the poems, resonated the most with me. It was like a prophetic table of contents, a foreshadowing of all the selves that would inhabit the strange but familiar world that Ileana builds. It sets, us, it sets us up for echoes that sing through its pages, colored with superstitions and myths and beautiful streets and sleeping violins and hurricanes and drag queens and women's bodies sin vergüenza and families and loves and griefs. And, and, and. That's crucial. These poems constantly push us with the and with its infinite possibilities. Anything can occur after and. Because what lurks in the shadow of and is if. The EC. C, not as in yes, but also as in yes, because the if demands our affirmations. Welcome to Karankawa. Enjoy the ride. And remember when your mind wanders to the and if, hang on, because everything is possible. So, Ileana Rocha has a PhD now, yes. right? <laughs> uh, uh, from Western Michigan University. Her work was chosen for Best New Poets 2014 uh, anthology and has appeared or is forthcoming in Blackbird, Yola Busha Review, Puerto del Sol, and Third Coast. Welcome, Ileana. I just want to, I'm just so grateful to be here. Um, like I said, it's it's been a while and, and it just feels surreal to see familiar faces and talk with new ones. Um, so I'm going to start with a, a newer poem and I need audience participation for this one. Um, do I have any singers in the room? Aaron. <laughs> That's what I hear. So um, this poem references the Beatles song, She Loves You, Yeah, Yeah. So I, when I gesture to, to the audience, I would hope, I hope that you sing that line for us. So let's do a practice. <laughs> See if we're in the right. Um, so we'll do a practice. And then when I give you the signal in the poem, I want you to sing it robustly and with joie de vivre and gusto and all that. So let's do a practice. Ready? One, two, three. She loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, that's the, that is awesome. Okay, so you'll, you'll know the signal. This is a poem called Dolled Up, and it's about my mother, who I, I don't really write a lot about, but it's kind of about American, performing an American identity and what that means for um, a Mexican one. Dolled Up. My peace offering to the world has been mascara. Wand giving faith to the flirt. Black is black or very black or brown black declarative for being 15. So, so bad at 15. Mascara that will try to steal your boyfriend. Mascara that will kick your ass in its iconic hot pink and lime green tube. 
the sex pistols boil down to their darkest gut rot. My mother arranging and rearranging her tubes in her eau de toilettes on a mirrored tray that never convinced her of her glam glamour. Much like us showing her adoration for the 60s by shouting along, She loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> to a Beatles tribute band in a college auditorium, my mother and I. My mother, who envied a chalkboard's amnesia, wanted to go down and kneel by the happiness there. The lamentation appears now as a winged liner and cut crease, those Courtney Love mornings with a southern beauty queen smeared into my pillowcase. Don't ever say there isn't history here. I'm apologizing for it all the time. This white Mexican girl who learned what to leave out for not obeying Christ for understanding the word please is just a guarantee of more longing. For listening to my canary walkman, Eddie Vedder, ringing the adolescence from my body, little canary, all places in me, singing. For removing the pelvis of my bedroom from its spine, taking the window to every place I went that wasn't home. So today, um, the Senate vetoed the emergency declaration, but I think the president will probably veto that. Um, so writing about the border has been especially important for me as somebody who's Mexican-American whose family um, immigrated from Mexico. Um, this is also a, a newer poem called Collective Memory, and it begins with an epigraph um, from a New York Times article about, or it's called When um, Americans Lynched Mexicans, and this is the epigraph. From 1848 to 1928, mobs murdered thousands of Mexicans. Those surviving records allowed us to clearly document only about 547 cases. 10 Mexicans are dead, left to suffocate in a trailer, discovered after the driver asked someone for a drink of water. The truck's cooling system was broken, and that's one way to describe the arrhythmia of our fumbling Americana. Bodies, their sorrows boiling as if on a stove, vital organs melting plastic through Texas fingers. We've left their dreams lifeless, dangling by the necks, carotids wrung out to dry, like old hand towels my gr grandmother pins on a line. They give breeze back for the wind to bear in a way skin can't. What violence gives back to us is more of itself, and power gives us delete, delete, delete. Another Mexican interrupted from planting flowers in a horse's skull was bound to a mesquite and taught a lesson about divinity's combustion. The lynch mob wasn't satisfied until they couldn't tell his body from the bark. In San Antonio, authorities peel the bodies away from where they lie, but they can't remove the wreckage from their faces. Deeper still is that old trailer abandoned in Victoria, the one with 18 dead, Mexican immigrants inside. This is not plagiarism. This is history in circles. This is um, a newer poem too. It's a, a Mexican-American sonnet. And it's written with gratitude to Wanda Coleman and Terrence Hayes. And I will never forget bringing a sonnet to Tito when I was, <laughs> when I was in the program. And it, it wasn't a traditional one. And <laughs> so Tito was like, you have to write the traditional sonnet before you before you break it. Um, so I've written the traditional one. So this is a, a disrupted, uh, dis disrupted one. Mexican American sonnet. We have the same ankles, hips, nipples, knees. Our bodies bore the forks, the nadores we used to eat. What do we eat? Darkness from cathedral floors. The heart's woe in abundance. Please let us go through the world touching what we want, knock things over, slap and kick and punch until we get something right. Verdad? Isn't it true? My father always asks. Your father is the ghost of mine and vice versa. And when did our pasts stop recognizing themselves? It was always like us to first person, yo, to disrupt a hurricane's path with our own inwardness. Come on, Urakang, you watery migraine, prove us wrong for once. This sadness lasts. Esta tristeza perdura. 
Say it both ways so language doesn't bite back but stays. That's for Kristen. This is Still Life, and it's for my Aunt Carmen, who... Um, Karanka was actually... My book was inspired by an aunt who passed away, and my Aunt Carmen, also an aunt, passed away quite suddenly, and she was my support system through my PhD, and then um, a few months later just died very suddenly. But um, now she haunts my house, mm -hmm. and she comes and visits on the anniversary of her death and her birthday, and my chihuahuas always tell me when she's there. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel good that she, she comes back. This is still life for my Aunt Carmen. Sorrow drizzles down a gray feather like a woman painting the Virgin Mary's minutia on an acrylic nail. She taps her finger on the margarita glass, claims the antihero for holiness is inside. What exactly have I evolved past? El Diablo no duerme, written in red lipstick on the edge of her cup stuck with salt. And the clouds on hangers are like my grandfather's blue satin Houston Oilers jacket, oil dirt erect. Donkeys, globes, and assorted cartoon characters made cumbia from the ceiling by string. She takes out a CoverGirl compact powder in the lightest shade. Cakes on layers in a way no one understood when I did it in high school in lieu of hanging out with the Mexican girls. The trumpets in their relentless barking come by, serenading the table with El Rey, and she is never afraid to confront nostalgia. Remember when we crumpled up the rice fields, put them tequila lit in barrels? When Daddy telegrammed himself back from Normandy? Our sticky mouths of masa harina, not a platitude, but a plea for domesticity we disowned. As a little old woman behind glass pounds dough into tortillas, we line our newborns up in neat rows, build animals from shredded newspapers and paper mache. I connect my skeleton with brass fasteners, adding a bow to my mouth with too dark lip liner. So everybody know who Lorraine and Bobbitt is? Okay. I don't know what the kids know these days, so I always have to ask. Um, this is called Lorraine Bobbitt is my godmother. <laughs> There's nothing funnier than a penis hidden in grass other than the police officer who wouldn't touch it because he was so religious. <laughs> That's true. We've spent decades laughing, and surely that must be enough. Laughter, a series of turning aways. But I'm still waiting for the moment when that delight is dismembered, assassinated, put on trial, sent death threats, told to shut the fuck up, runs for political office and loses, thrown out of a car window and drained of its blood, the ghost of us waits there in that apartment in Manassas, in that bedroom in Victoria, Texas, on that street going south out of town where you swore you'd end the world of me in favor of proving yourself to the universe. The most urgent artifact in this museum, the penis. How men were so scared their wives would do it to them while women fantasized about doing it. It was the 90s. Men asked if this was feminism. Women hid their faces behind their hands. La Llorona as Andrea Yates. The mouse hangs by its tail and kitchen chairs stand still on their beaks. I left the eggs boiling on the stove, the iron hot. Everything is going up in flames. I don't mind. I watch the children float like leaves while the plastic car sinks to the bottom of the tub. A steady beat within my diaphragm predicts the next earthquake, records its rhythm in blood vessels until the walls collapse. I was once a boiled egg before I was this. Chewed cuticles and orchids, ponytails and rapes. Somewhere in Texas, a crowd predicts my death. They say it will sound like the scream of a tuba being born. Creation myth, 1981. I was born drunk. It's my favorite poem in the whole, whole book. 
And you know, I should probably have that memorized, and I do, but I always like turn to it. <laughs> I don't know what that says about me. <laughs> This is a self-portrait with headphones on, and it begins with two epigraphs, one from Kid Cudi, um, <laughs> from the song Pursuit of Happiness, and he says, I'm on the pursuit of happiness, and I know everything that shines ain't always going to be gold. I'll be fine once I get it. I'll be good. I'll be jamming out to that later at the bar, probably. <laughs> and then the second one is uh, Don Draper from an episode of Mad Men where he says, but what is happiness? It's a moment before you need more happiness. I was born drunk, listening to music in the womb, rap videos projected on the chapel walls of my mother's uterus, a little sheen, a lot of strut, dropping it like it's hot, with my eyes still sewn shut. I wish I wouldn't have been told what it was, promised it by the simple act of being alive. I've been trying to trace its origins from schoolboy Q and ASAP Rocky to Lissy to Kid Cudi See it braless and sparkling on a microphone like getting blown by a drag queen. When I squint, I can slowly see it revealing itself, glowing beige on the horizon like an apple bottom falling out of a G-string. Holy Kathleen lights, holy stiletto, holy stripper. The incompleteness of instant gratification, my lacquered heart, the Minot d'Air carrying lipsticks in all the same color like Mirage and Lady Danger, fashion and Spanglish, papayasa. Dad used to stand in his drunk kitchen, trying to chase it down with his glass of shine, starching my jeans until they were glitter best, while other half-alive things crowded around, iron and frying pan of spam. Versions of it are extinct, like cursive and men with crushes, my best friend's breasts gone, and all I can do is talk shit with my jumper cable lips. I know there isn't much of it, of anyone, and you always have to be left for a different, more reachable one. Descriptions of his tongue. And I remember exactly where I wrote this. I was in Piper House, in the classroom back there. Is that classroom still there? And it was Becky and Goldberg's Forms class. Descriptions of his tongue. His tongue does crazy eights far inside my mouth. His tongue is kindergarten in my mouth, cutting construction paper, glitter, and glue that hardens in my mouth. His tongue casts stones like scaled creatures across the pink pond scar of my mouth, skipping across the surface, a fish unzipped, salamander zipped, caviar in my mouth, a margarita in my mouth, drunk and vomiting on the side of the road in my mouth. His tongue is a bra and hooking in my mouth, a suede sofa, unhinged armoire in my mouth, cashmere wet with rain in my mouth, wrung out until it's dry, shrunken in my mouth. Catholic, sitting on the toilet reciting prayers, Santo Nino de Atocha, knocking on my mouth door. Tangerine giving birth in my mouth, litter of three, no four, in my mouth. The process of sand turned to melting glass, being blown into a swan's arch in my mouth. His tongue is a cigarette extinguished on my two front teeth, red alarm in my mouth. A gun swallowing shining light, JFK, in my mouth. Exploding car in my mouth. This is um, for my best friend, Allison, who I met here in the program. Um, this is, <laughs> y'all can relate. Um, this is called Hot Mess, and I'm, I've been friends with her since 2005, and I'm flying to see her tomorrow, so um, a lot of magic happens in this program. Hot Mess. Breasts, boobs, tits, knockers, fun bags, hooters, Tatas, Jugs, the Twins, Elmer Fudds, and Bouncing Buddhas, Frost Detectors, High Beam Lights, O to Joyce, Gerber Servers, Holy Grails, Rubber Baby Buggy Bumpers. Your boobs have done us good, girl. My God, they were amazing. I've seen them in fitting rooms, bedrooms, falling out of a tube top to Fat Man Scoop. No, that was me. Men offered, <laughs> men offered to pay to see your bazongas rack 
Lucy Lou's. Now it's the Anesthesia Mixtape. Offbeat xylophones, dull, out of tune, tin stars, rubbing their bodies against each other like a faded Super Mario Brothers theme song, ecking out a Nintendo. Along with your high school crush chanting, owner of a lonely heart, <laughs> into a plastic cup. Nothing glows, and your mammogram never predicted the response of classic beige yawns pulling clothes their trench coats. All drafty and loneliness in the waiting room. You won't cancel your Vegas show, your date nights, but we agree that people can no longer disappoint us. I'll tell you something. When Courtney loves saying, I miss world, somebody kill me, she didn't mean it. When Sanders St. Nettles wrote about being beautiful and cruel, she meant it. How did you say goodbye to them? Did you light a candle at their altar? Was it more like flowers or a note of condolence? I can't imagine you, Miss Thang, getting the news or being rolled into the OR. All the talk of deformities and motherhood and bodies turning against us and no man, no man, no man there. Isn't it sad? We love them in dresses, Jinx Monsoon, Latrice Royale, Willem, Manila Luzon, Juju B, Ben de la Creme, Bianca Del Rio, Alexis Mateo, Poppy, I want you to come back home. How they wear their boobs for queens.com. You say you admired them one last time, let them overwhelm the width of your hand, said fuck it, thought about how much excuse me, thought about an umbrella trying to hold the wind, how much your last bra cost, oh, the shame, the shame of losing those ragtime funnies, those drugstore cowboys, those Travoltas. <laughs> I don't think there's actually, a, um, it's actually slang to call boobs Travoltas, but I could be wrong. <laughs> those, those things change all the time. Um, this next poem is... Um, about my grandmother, who's who's a, very present in this book, and I wrote this poem many, many years ago. Um, and um, since then, my grandmother lost her house to Hurricane Harvey. Um, she the the frame of it was retained, and it's been completely redone, and she hates it now. Which, if you knew her, that's really on brand. Um, <laughs> but I like to think that this poem kind of demonstrates the psychic properties um, of language and of writing. This is Wharton, Texas. A summer Thursday, an address imposing shape, pecan trees painted white at the waist, half undressed in the tiny yard. The Virgen de Guadalupe winks in stone at the joke of running water in her arms. Someone has left one wing of the barbecue pit open to rest along with the soda cans in the ditch. On the porch, she stops and wonders what blew apart, recalls the hurricane where all things collided, the blue bonnets, the parakeet, the futile instruction of how to fill her empty spaces while they hurry to widen. After a violent rain, old material settles. Marriage, family. Another Mexican child is born, tugs on her apron's hem for an answer to eventual solitude. She offers only a tired face, windows boarded up, a phone off the hook, incessantly repeating its nothingness. Her fingernail yellowed points to the attic where childhood happiness is stacked in old suitcases. She tortures this house into gold. This is Karankala. It's 1993 and you haven't died yet. In fact, you have a little bit of time, about a decade. I know we are getting closer to you when we follow the road as it curves, like when the lower back meets the ass. The concrete musculature of Lake Jackson, a city built on the bones of the Karankala, who drank the hurricane's maroons, escaped from their enemies' aortas, like a Bud Light. The sound of an aluminum can crushed against the forehead, a metal sign announces itself. Population 25,357. We are getting closer to your house, one of hair and braids, 
where I learned the shame that accompanies pissing on myself, tying a sweater around my waist to hide the wet continent stretching itself out on the back of my shorts. Another shame was womanhood. If it wasn't piss, it was the bloody blossoms saturating the garden of my pubis. The bougainvillea gripped the wooden fence outside while I had my first kiss 100 times, and I chewed each bottom lip like a cigarette butt. Those times I sat on the floor between your knees while you coaxed my hair into careful plates, all things rattling their grief in the kitchen. And I just have a couple more, and I just want to thank um, Justin and Kristen for this generous invitation. Um, it's, it's been great to be back. Um, I, I'm, I'm really humbled to be among you and to speak with students and to talk about poetry. Um, thank you so much for being here and for listening. This is a, another new poem. This is um, Michael Vick is still apologizing somewhere for abusing dogs. And this is dedicated to my one of my rescue chihuahuas. Um, her name is Vanilla Prose. <laughs> Vanilla Prose Rocha, to be exact. Her lungs, the green tarps covering abandoned bu buildings swallowed and then spit out by the flood, Houston's unsympathetic hurricane. I didn't toss a dollar into a guitar case for the man serenading the chapel's ghosts because what have I ever given except loves less than? His beetles cover world in me like a chihuahua thrown against a wall that can run only in circles. My body, a guitar ripped of its frame and filled with dough. Vanilla's the only one to see me naked in over a year. Thighs that can't get enough of each other that they burn through denim in order to touch. Michael Vick paid someone $100 to dig two graves for dogs, but that person refused to bury them, and I hope for half that much mercy. I picture my head in a bucket of water, my neck in between nylon cord attached to a two-by-four because we've used up what's left of our good. This was supposed to be a love poem, but what I've learned is that the backside of love's hand is Nilla's mouth. Just open it and count the violence. When he goes to rest his hand on my shoulder, she charges and barks and screams until she knows I'm safe. No one else has done this unless I've asked, not even my own body. Origin. You said we were where life began. Only matter preceded us, Andromeda, Orion, which he claimed were metallic nipples anticipating fingertips. As I listened to your history, I let my fingers glide your skin, the bones underneath enduring as wood. Open me, you said. I did. Thank you. <laughs>